thought things were quiet up there finally. She's asleep. I know it's not um, the beach on a Caribbean island at sunset, but... It's better. A honeymoon picnic in our own house. A nuptial feast for the bride. The bride thanks you. I want to make a toast. Oh, do I hear something? No. No, not a peep. Now, come on. Let me make a toast here. To my bride, who's made me the happiest man on two continents. Only two? How many are there? Uh, it's, uh, seven. To the happiest. I am the happiest man on seven continents here. I adore you. And to my husband, the man who taught me the meaning of the word love. Of another degree. Cindy? Cindy, you waking up? Stuart. Cindy. Hi. Hey. You're going to be all right. You're just a little bit sick. That's all. Everybody's, everybody's doing everything they can to take real good care of you. Angie. Yeah, I'm here, Cindy. So is Ruth. Now, I want you to try not to worry. Don't you get scared by all this equipment, because they're just giving you some oxygen so you can breathe better. Is this it? Shh. Shh, shh. Don't, don't, don't talk. Don't talk. Am I dying? for expectant mothers. Oh. I think you'll find this one of particular interest. It has an article in there on diabetic pregnancies. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. Is there anything I can do for you? Would you like for me to call Dr. Clater and set up an appointment? Oh. Mrs. Conley, are you okay? I'm fine. Why don't you let me call your husband? I don't think you should try and drive no. home. Um, no, I... I am fine. I'm really... I'm just parked right... Right downstairs, and if, if I need a taxi, I'll I'll call. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll. Yes. Thank you. I'll be in, I'll be in touch with you. Thank you. Nina.
My head hurts. Mom can fix Well, are you all right? Fine. Then well, let's go to an examining room. No, no, it's just, I think You're it's both the flu. It's the flu. Sit down, sit down, just sit down. I think it's just the flu. Well, put your head down. I thought I had recovered, but I just... You in Dr. MacGyver's office? Do you know him? Well, no, not yet. I haven't met him. Just a checkup? Oh, Cliff, your face. No, it's, it's nothing. Oh, no. It's not worth discussing, okay? So you and Matt had a fight? Yeah. Yeah, we traded a couple punctures, yeah. Oh, I have to... Oh. Easy. You all right? I just I knew that something like that would happen. I just... Don't apologize. Don't. Uh... Just do me one favor. Don't send Matt around looking for me anymore. I didn't. Okay, then tell Matt to keep his nose out of my business. Cliff, he cares about Bobby. No, no I do like not need son. Matt Connolly telling me how to raise my son. Your son? Yes, yeah, my son, not his. No, he is my son, too, and you're trying to take him away from me. He belongs with me. Not in Al Gorda. That is where my work is, But Nina. it's dangerous, Cliff. I can take care of him. The little boy. That's right, and I'm his father. And I'm his mother, and he needs me. You made your choices, Nina. Well, you made yours too, Cliff. Okay, look, I, I don't want to argue with you. Look, I'm taking him to Al Gorda, and that's all there is to it. I have my rights. This isn't the place to discuss this. You're going to be all right? Nina, you... Warner, put that blood count for me as soon as possible, would you? Excuse me, Dr. McIver? Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Cliff Warner. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Pine Valley Hospital. Well, thank you very much. I was hoping I could have a word or two with you. Uh, sure. Carrie, why don't you go ahead? I'll be there in just a minute. Uh, I just wanted to ask a, a question or two about uh, a patient. Uh, your last patient, as a matter of fact, with the, with the blonde hair and the, and the pretty blue eyes. Uh, what's her condition? You know her? Well, I'm very familiar with her, her case, yes. Um, uh, what's she here for? Doctor, I'm sorry, I don't give out information regarding my patient's conditions. Well, not even me. to professionals. This is not just idle curiosity, Doctor. Look, I'm sure it isn't. But, Dr. Warner, if you're concerned about the lady's health, I suggest that you ask Mrs. Connolly yourself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for a meeting. Hi, I don't think she's getting enough milk. Of course he is. Look at that healthy glow. Mm, I know. Seems like just every two hours, though. Yes, it does. Look, she's gained almost an ounce this past week. Mm, yes, yes. You've got a healthy appetite, sweetheart. Mommy doesn't have any reason to worry, does she? No. Oh, good. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, that's a, just a wonderful girl. She burped, she burped. Yeah, that's amazing, all right. <laughs> Are you sleepy now? Mm -hmm. I think she's ready to go back to sleep now. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn a few lullabies. Oh, Travis, does it ever scare you? Does what scare me? Oh, she's so little and she's so fragile. And I mean, what if we do something wrong? I mean, we never had any babies before, and suddenly here we are, we're parents, and we're responsible. Doesn't scare me. Makes me feel proud. I'm very, very, very filled with love. But she's just such a helpless little thing. A little innocent life, and she's so dependent on us. I know. And we'll make mistakes, all parents do, but that's... That's part of the job, isn't it, Pumpkin? Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Are you ready to go to sleep now? Yes. Yeah. Did you tell me yes? You're ready to sleep? Let's try it, okay? Let's try it. Go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> you know, if you want, I can get uh, Mrs. Heath to start. I'm sure that she wouldn't mind starting a few days early. Oh, no. Are you kidding? Have a nurse barge in on our honeymoon? What in your life? No, I just want the three of us. I just want the three of us. Just our family. Right. Well, why don't we put Sleepy Head to bed and go on downstairs for our picnic? What a good idea. Mm -hmm. Is that a good idea? I think so. Let's see if it's a good idea. Okay? 
I know she will, because I love her. I'm glad you're here. Oh, Stuart. Thank you for coming. Listen, Adam would have been here sooner, but he had a little bit of a crisis at the office. Yeah, well, that's OK. He, he doesn't have to hold my hand. He wants to be here, Stuart. We both want to be here, all right? We care about you, and we care about Cindy. That's nice. But, but uh, are you going in there? Room 401, the AIDS case? Uh, well, what's happening? What's wrong? What's wrong? He called for a blood pressure reading. Just what do you think you're doing? What's he doing to her? Give me some warning if you're going to cough, lady, OK? Outside, come on. Outside, you. I want to talk to you outside, please. Right. What's the beef? Just what do you think that you are doing, walking into this patient's room, wearing that outfit? I mean, do you have any idea of what effect seeing you dressed like that could have on her? She's got AIDS, hasn't she? Who is your if supervisor? If I touch her, I protect Who myself. Who is your supervisor? Daniels. Well, didn't she inform you that the guidelines for the handling of AIDS patients are posted in every staff room in this hospital? You're on report, Jones, and I do not want to see your face near this room again. Is that understood? I'll stay away with pleasure, Mrs. Martin. Cindy, everything's okay. Ruth, Ruth made that awful man go outside. He's not coming back again. Everything is okay. I promise. Now you just concentrate on getting well, okay? Oh, oh, she's wet. Again? Yes, yeah, so see for yourself. Uh we're going to show Daddy now how wet you are. He needs to yeah. see this. This baby's yeah, wet. right. Here, I'll change her. What? I'll change her. I'm a man of the 80s. I know how to change my own daughter. <laughs> well, be careful then. I mean, you have to cradle her head. You I know, know how to hold a baby. See? There we go. Put you right down here. Now, I'll just open up all these snaps. What do you think of that? Your daddy uh -huh. changing your diapers, huh? Sure, daddy can change diapers, too. He's not such a useless guy. Now, all we need is a fresh diaper. Okay. 
It goes to Rivercade? Oh, no. Oh, no. no. You don't know. We're out? We're out. Oh, well, don't panic. We'll, uh, use, um, old towels. Old towels will work just fine. Now, here we go. Get rid of this diaper here. Ta-da! Two dozen, 100% old-fashioned, all-American cloth cotton diapers. Great. Just perfect. Here, you take that. That's used. Thank you. Now, get a little thing over here. You don't know what you're doing. I know precisely what I'm doing. It's not all that long ago since I've had mine changed. I know what I'm doing now. I don't believe you at all. You know, these are awful big. What are you doing? I'm taking a rectangle, and I'm folding it into a triangle. Actually, I make two triangles here. Now, we just take this, put this over here, and then put this. You don't know what you're doing. Well, this diaper's not good. Give me another one. That one's too big. Here we are. I think the rectangle is a much better idea. Yes, sweetie pie. Yes, we're almost done. OK. Do we have any pins? Pins. Yep. Pins. Oh, yes, look you at think these this is pins. Fun. Oh, these pins have little duckies on them. Look at these little ducks. pins. Oh, I love these pins. There we go. Ow. Mm. Oh, careful. Don't hurt yourself. Thank you. Then, please. Now, you be careful. Oh, careful. I will. I will. All right. Put this little pin in here. And there we go. <laughs> Simple as that. Put that over there. That wasn't so hard. No, that wasn't so hard at all. Now we come on over here with Daddy. Oh, yes. I think she needs Daddy to rock her for a while. Yes, she doesn't look very sleepy. Well, Daddy will rock her, and then she'll maybe get a little sleepy. Now. Now. There. How are we doing? You're melting my heart. I guess that means we're doing okay, huh? I know you're going through a difficult time right now, Cliff, but this is something that's got to be said. I know, I let you down. I had to twist a lot of arms on that board to get you back on staff. I know, Joe, and I appreciate it. I'm Cliff, sorry. you I... made a decision. You made a commitment. We need you in surgery right here in Pine Joe, Valley. Joe, I thought you of all people might understand this. Now, look, I respect your idealism. You know that. But you're moving too fast. You're making decisions without fully considering them. I don't think you're considering your family. Bobby wants to go to El Gordo. Bobby is a child, and his mother is here. Look, Joe, I'm sorry. I, I know I let you down. I know you went out on a limb for me, and I'm sorry. I... I have to do this. This is for me, something I have to do. Please excuse me, I gotta got see a patient. That spooky looking nurse scared the daylights out of her. Oh, sure. Can't you keep people from treating her that way? Oh, listen, I am damn well gonna try. I mean, Cindy has every right to compassionate medical care. I just talked to Jones's supervisor, and nothing like that will happen again, I can assure you. Angie, where is Angie with Cindy? Oh, she just went in. Okay. Mm -hmm. she, she may need me. Okay. I better not see that nurse Jones again. Take off his, take off his mask and cram it down his throat. Stuart, come on. Getting angry doesn't, doesn't do any good. Yeah. Everybody, from now on... That hurt Cindy's gonna answer to me. Stuart, got here as soon as we could, huh, Cindy? Uh, no changes. Angie and Ruth are in with her. I, you know, Stuart hasn't eaten anything since breakfast. I wanted to take him down to the cafeteria and get a sandwich. It's a good idea. We'll all go together. No. Huh? What is she doing here? here because we care about you. We love you. We want to help. Tom made you come, didn't he? Of course he didn't. You're, you're my uncle. Well, I know I'm not smart enough to decide things, but I don't need help from someone like you. Excuse me. What? Mm, let me go get him. 
guy? Why is your Uncle Stuart so mad at you? I don't know. I guess he's just upset, and, and he needs somebody to lash out at. What was that he said about not being smart enough? He's under a lot of stress. And maybe he just hasn't forgiven me forever for not having accepted Cindy in the first place. I, I don't know. Hey, it's real easy to get mad at me. You get mad at me all the time. This guy, come on. It, it hurts my feelings, but... I really don't think that we should hold him responsible for anything he says right now. I, I, I think we should go home. Home? Well, what can we do? I, he, he, he doesn't want us here, or he doesn't want me here. And I'm not going to force myself on But he him. needs our support right now, Sky. Tom, he walked off. He's in love with a woman who is ill. She has AIDS. Look. Maybe he can't accept what we have to offer right now, but I do think it's important that we be here for him. Let him know we care, at least. I, I know. It's just that the hospital is so full of, of, of germs and... Oh, sweetheart, sweetheart, sweetheart. You've read all the material about AIDS. You know that your fear was unrealistic. You even went to the meeting with us. For crying out loud, you saw with your own eyes the harm that can be created by excessive fear. Tom. Now, listen to me. Your Uncle Stewart is picking up on your feelings. He is under a lot of stress and he is confused, but he loves you. And you love him. We stay. Okay? Okay. shouldn't leave his toys around. Oh, I don't mind. He's, uh, he's upstairs doing his homework. He's doing a report on Al Gorda for social studies. Would you like some tea? Oh, uh, no. No, thanks. The taquitas in the kitchen when you're ready. Hard night? Yeah, yeah, long night. So you had surgery, huh? Yeah. Everything's all right with your patients. Mm. My goodness, you're tense. Just try to relax. That'd make you feel a little better. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, I saw Matt. I know. Bobby told me. Uh, yeah, that's the worst part. I can't believe he walked in on the whole thing. I think he understands, Cliff. Did you and Matt settle anything? Yeah, fat chance. Oh. I saw Nina. I did, too. At the hospital. Dr. MacGyver? I, I don't know who she was seeing. She's not making it easy, is she? She doesn't want you to leave. No, it's not me. It's Bobby. It's both of you. But I'm not running my life around the two of them. You think that's what they're asking? Bobby is my son. I've been separated from him enough already. You having second thoughts about going? No. No, I have an important job to do in Algorda, a job I believe in. And I'm taking my son with me. I don't give a damn what Nina or Matt think. Sometimes, but not stupid. All right, I decked him. 
But taking Bobby away, uh uh, that ain't gonna happen. Not while I got breath in my body. Oh, Matt. <laughs> oh, Matt. Oh, he said that you'd fought. Cliff? You saw him where? At the hospital. What were you doing I'm gonna at the go hospital? and get some ice for your face. It really Wait a minute, swell. Nina. I went to Dr. MacGyver's office because he had some brochures, you know, about diabetes. Yeah. And I read them. And I'm fine. Yeah? I'm fine. I'm not the one who has to... Oh. oh. Tell me what happened. Ah, uh, he had it coming. He's been asking for it for a long time, and he got it. That's all. I mean, this this thing with Bobby, it's way out of bounds. Oh, look, I also saw a lawyer friend of mine. You what? Yeah, a guy I've done some work with over in Center City. I, I took him a copy of your separation agreement. Oh, Matt. What did he say? Did he say that Cliff could take him out of the country? No, he said he would read it over, okay? And then he'd let us know what he thought. But there's more than one option, you know, okay? Everything's going to be all right. Don't worry. Nobody's going to take Bobby away from you. Thank you so much for caring enough to do that. Thank me? What are you thanking me for? Don't you know by now how much you and Bobby mean to me? I'd do as much if he was my own kid. Hi. Hello, sir. How is he? No change. How's Stuart? He's been very brave. He really has. But he hadn't eaten anything since breakfast. Uh, I took him downstairs to get a sandwich, but he said he just wanted to be alone. Where is he? He's in the chapel. I know he'd be glad to see you. He needs you. How are you? I need you, too. I'm fine, really. Go go and talk to him, all right? And tell him that I love him, too. I will. All right. I'll be back here soon. OK. Adam is going to try and talk to Stuart. Well, that might help. You know, Angie says a lot of times uh, AIDS victims are able to fight off infections for a long period of time. Well, they don't even know what's wrong with it, bro. I hate hospital waiting rooms. I hate sitting around feeling helpless. No, just wish you could do something. You just want to change things. You just want to make some things understandable somehow. Yeah, how are you supposed to understand fear and prejudice? And like throwing a rock through the Hubbard's window or writing hate messages on the side of the Glamorama. Hell, how did everybody in Pine Valley find out that she has AIDS anyway? I don't think it matters now how everyone found out. I think the most important thing is that we protect Cindy from any other trouble. Well, what's wrong with calling her after a flower that was in bloom in South Carolina when she was conceived? It's very romantic. How about belladonna, then? That's a flower. That's poison. OK, um, snapdragon or deer fern, deer tongue fern. That's a flower, too. <laughs> I think you have to admit it. You're just prejudiced against flowers. Well, no. I just like family names, names that have a history to them. Like what, Travis Jr.? No, Travis, Travis. Travis Jr. was your idea. Erica Jr. was my idea. No, no, no. Erica Jr. is definitely out of the question. <laughs> what other family names? Well, uh, how about Mona? Mona Kane Montgomery. I think that's a pretty good name. Mona? No, darling, I mean, I love my mother, but I don't want to saddle my little girl with Mona at all, ever, for a million years. OK, how about my mother's name? Laura Lee. Well, no offense against your mother. It's just that, well, I, I don't want my daughter to sound like a steamboat. How about, how about colors? Yeah. It's scarlet. Oh, so, frankly, my dear, I don't like scarlet. Scarlet O'Hara, she, she was a ninny. How could you call Scarlet O'Hara a ninny? Scarlet O'Hara was, oh, she's asleep. Can't wake her up. She's so beautiful, we should just call her beautiful. <laughs> How could we ever argue over what to call her? Especially since we're on our honeymoon with a picnic downstairs with soft music. What a great idea. And nobody's going to interrupt us because they think that we're on some exotic island. Mm -hmm. No, no possible interruption at all unless...
taking more... Want some of ham and cheese? Uh-uh. No, thanks. Uh, you sure that MacIver didn't give you bad news? Matt, I'm fine. I'm just not hungry. Well, you didn't eat much at dinner. It's just the flu. You know, I think I've just overdone it. Yeah, well, you got Cliff to thank for that. Oh, Gustav. Oh, come on, Nina. He's a doctor. He knows you're weak sometimes. You're under pressure. I don't want to talk I... about Cliff. Or Dr. McIver, I want to talk about how much I appreciate you. Well, that's a subject I could listen to for years. I do. You're always there for me. You're always on my side, no matter what. Hey, you got that right. I love you. I don't want to ever lose you. Lose me? I need you, man. I'm here. As long as you want me, I'm not going anywhere. This is such a nice house. Thanks. It's a warm fire and lots of books. I've come to feel very home here. I'll miss it. Cliff. What? I said I'll miss this house and I'll miss Pine oh. Valley. Yeah, I'll miss it too. It's so peaceful and tranquil. It's the vision that kept you alive while you were in prison. Yeah. Yeah, this house and Bobby got me through some pretty rough times. It wasn't just the house and Bobby. I mean, Nina. Yes? Well, I guess some fantasies don't exactly pan out like you planned. Anyway, I am sorry to say goodbye to Pine Valley, but I'm not sorry I'm going. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I've got important work to do in Al Gore. I can, I can teach, I can, I can learn. I, I have so much I can share with your people. People who shared with me when I really needed help. What about your life here? I have Bobby. He's all that matters. What about me? I have you too, I hope. She's getting worse. Fever's starting to spike again. How much more can she take? Angie, we mustn't give up. And, and Angie? Cindy, I'm here. What can I do? Uh, honey, I want to... Wanna... I'm here, too. I'm here, too. Now, look, just tell us what you need. Your son is fine. Now, I don't want you to be concerned about him. What? What if I don't... No. No, no, no what ifs. You're not going to die, Cindy. We're doing everything that we can to help you recover. But if I don't... I didn't hear from Fred's mother. Yes, Scott's grandmother. Oh, if I die... You won't have any place to go. Cindy, he's not going to need any place to go. He has a home with us as long as he needs it. Angie, come on, come on, we love him. He's Frankie's best friend. What about Jesse? This was Jesse's idea. We love you both. And now, now listen, honey, we want you to lie back and relax. Keep your breathing as even as possible. You need rest, Cindy. 
Stuart's okay. Thanks. Now, come on. Get some rest, okay? Dear God, please don't let Cindy die. Not yet. It's too soon. She has too much left to do. Please. I need her to live, God. Please don't take her away from me. Cindy will pull through this. Yes, she is. She, she has to. A lot of people on her side, including me, Stuart. Thank you. I know how busy you are. You don't, you don't really have to stay here with me. I can handle this. Of course, I know that. But I'd like to keep you company, if you don't mind. I'd like that. Does Cindy have everything she needs? Doctors, medicine, anything I can do? She has complete faith in, in Joe and Angie. Me too. They'll give, give her everything she needs. How about you? Me? How are you? Are you all right? Sure. Stuart. I've never felt worse in my life. It's okay. It's okay. God can't let her die. It's not fair. What kind of sense does it make? and have our honeymoon. Erica? Sweetheart? <laughs> okay. Okay, come on. Come on, just lie down over here. Come on.
the peanut. Eight Eastern on ABC Sports. This is Charles Gibson. And Joan London. Tomorrow on Good Morning America, more.